I found a lot of peace in toy stores and I still find a lot of peace in toy stores. And I think that by creating my own toy store to live in basically, which is kind of what this is, it, it creates that peace kind of in my home. Okay, so every art form has its B version, right? We see that most obviously in movies, you know, B movies. Uh, in fine art, we have Marcel Duchamp and the Dada movement, you know, not necessarily a B movement, but something that's there to kind of interrogate traditional art books. We have the trashy romance novel. But in action figures, which I believe are also their own forms of art, we also have a lot of B-roll. And the B-roll in action figures are the weird stories, the, the things that have kind of washed up uh, on the mass market shore. And it's up to us to kind of look at these things and locate them within the greater context of action figure history, which is the same thing we do when we look at uh, a, a painting I represent a normal person right now. I'm six feet tall, um, and what you're looking at uh, to my left is Overkill from Spawn. Probably one of the most exaggerated bodies you can find. Uh, absolutely muscular. So the action figures do often um, tend to be a bit more exaggerated. And I mean, this is kind of just not even humanly possible. It's like, what, an eight pack? There's, um, there's scale and then there's features. So scale is how big or small your figures are. And features are, you know, muscles that are like the, the, the 10 pack that we saw in Spidey. And then what does that translate to when consumers buy those toys? So this is Hillary Clinton. Um, this is an action figure put out by Factory. Um, it's a, kind of an indie toy company that had its start on Kickstarter and then sort of took off from there. They've done Obama, they've done Bernie Sanders, most recently they've done Elizabeth Warren, and uh, they've produced uh, a Hillary Clinton action figure. Kind of your basic uh, political action figure. Um, what I like about Factory is their devotion to, um, to making um, statements with their, with their political figures. So, I mean, you know, Hillary Clinton, this is pretty much what you'd expect, pantsuit, you know, um, typical, typical look of, of Hillary. Um, but there's one particular action figure that they really uh, let their kind of activist side fly on, and it's actually not Hillary, Donald Trump. So here we have um, Donald Trump action figure, tiny hands, right? <laughs> <laughs> One giving the finger. The hair is removable. Oh, of course. <laughs> so you can now get I guarantee bald it doesn't even look that good. No, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. This this is probably terrifying in real life. Um, but what I really love about this figure and the reason I bought it is because for every one of these that Factory sells, they donate a portion of the profits to Guardian Angels. Guardian Angels is a um, organization that provides food and water and clothing to immigrants that are crossing the U.S.-Mexico border. They are uh, taking those profits and using them to benefit the very people that uh, this guy has marginalized. Um, so I really wanted to support that, even if it means I have a Donald Trump in my house. But um, the benefit to that is he gets to uh, stand with all my Cobra commanders and, you know, Decepticons and, and all of the evil uh, um, people that I have. A lot of uh, carnage. Yeah, it used to be organized. Because I see a fallen American flag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And a lot of good Joes <laughs> on the ground. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not great. And does Hil Hillary still stand with your Avengers? Yeah, yeah, she does. Okay, so this is uh, Scream and Janine Melnitz from the Ghostbusters uh, Screaming Heroes collection. The first Janine Melnitz figure that came out had her in her jumpsuit, cat eye glasses, kind of the Janine Melnitz we're very used to seeing. Well, at Kenner, there was an executive that uh, specifically said they wanted to make her more feminine, which is code for um, showing her as a passive 
character um, that is is somehow kind of less than the male characters uh, in the show. So what they come out with is this. Uh, as you can see here, her glasses are rounded. That was viewed as a more feminine feature. And she's out of the jumpsuit and into a skirt. Um, now, as if that weren't bad enough, uh, push this button that's here on her uh, chest. The legs spin and the skirt flies up. Um, you can kind of see that illustrated on the box right there. The idea that, you know, a woman's skirt flying up could just be kind of a fun action feature is more than a little problematic. Uh, they made these, um, and they sold okay. Um, this has become sort of a collector's item now. We're glad they stopped, but we're still left with the artifact itself. As we, uh, as we get to the bottom of this, what we'll be on the lookout for, though, is, uh, basically anything that uh, we might think might make a story. Okay, so this um, is Earring Magic Ken, uh, released in 1992 from Mattel. Um, everybody knows Ken, Barbie's love interest. Um, well, the thing with Ken is, you might be noticing um, his uh, sort of pleather vest, his mesh uh, uh, shirt. Um, when this came out, uh, there was gay panic surrounding this doll. Parents were saying, this is going to turn my kid gay. What are you doing? I mean, of course, you know, we all know homosexuality doesn't work like that if your kid's gay he's been gay it's not really the the doll that makes any difference but this was kind of where a lot of parents were at with the doll they would go on things like the today show or good morning america and kind of um protest this because of the protest you know mattel just kind of let this doll fizzle out the doll just kind of spent its time on the shelf and then moved along um but because of that uh the gay community has actually kind of embraced uh this doll and it's become dubbed cockring ken uh based on the fact that around his neck uh he's wearing what can really only be described as a cock ring um the actual function of course is so that you can hang the um the earrings on on the little uh chain there and uh make him kind of wear his name or barbie's name um but this was uh this was a product that was released i think probably intended to be fairly innocent um but uh but then became something representative of homophobia uh, which is, you know, interesting in the way that toys can kind of change after they've been released and people read these and they see messages in them, perhaps messages that either were or were not intended to be there. At the end of the day, there's really nothing bad. There's nothing bad about a terrible toy. You know, it's just not going to sell very well and, you know, not that many people will buy it. And I think that's okay. What... What we do have to think about, though, is that that space allows for um, some fairly offensive material, too. So, like, if you produce a toy that's got the Confederate flag on it, if you produce a toy whose skirt flies up, being a bad toy, that's one thing. But being an offensive toy, that's something else. So the way we can kind of deal with that is to kind of put our analytical brains in front of toys, just the same way we do with movies, the same way we do with art, so that toys don't just get away with being these throwaway objects that eh, you have it for a little while, or you buy it, or you don't buy it, and then you forget about it. Don't forget about it. Vote with your wallet. When it came to the Black Widow and Ray controversies, because for those two characters, um, it turned out when they were first releasing action figures for them, there weren't that many action figures for Black Widow or for Ray from Star Wars, um, despite being two of the most popular characters in these various franchises. So people took to Twitter with the hashtag where's Ray, hashtag where's Black Widow. People realized, hey, wait a second, you know, these female characters aren't getting the same representation as the male characters. And companies took note of this too. They're like, oh, people want to buy these things, so therefore we'll make them. And they did. Um, now we've got much more Black Widow merchandise. We've got much more Ray merchandise. Is it perfect? No. But is it better? Yeah, I think so. So there's something to be said for fans actually looking at action figures with a critical eye and then taking action. You're a professor. Right. You are a published author. Right. I edited the first 
collection of academic essays on action figures. The, the first book that's solely devoted to studying action figures in an academic way. 